Good afternoon, Internet. I hope Good you've... afternoon, Internet. Good afternoon, Internet. I hope you've been well. Um, I've been doing very... Good afternoon, Internet. Seriously? Seriously. Good, Good afternoon, Internet. Good afternoon, Internet. Uh, okay, so those voices are kind of um, upset. So um, a few weeks back, I had introduced the idea of going through another Let's Play and giving you a list of eight games that I wanted to play. I think it was about eight. Um, and then did nothing with it. I apologize. I have my reasons. In fact, I'm going to be recording a video with said reasons after this one. But, well, why don't you listen to the other me's and their ideas for the four games that I've narrowed things down to. Only two of which were actually on that list before. <sighs> Oops. Well, what about me over here? See, I'm here playing Zelliard. Zelliard is what we would today refer to as a Metroidvania game. Um, it's actually an action-adventure game, similar in style if you've played Zelda 2 or Vaxanadu or games along that nature. Zelliard was originally released for, I want to say, the MSX. Not entirely sure off the top of my head. This is a PC game, so I'm playing this in DOSBox. I'm actually using a keyboard to play this, believe it or not, because trying to use a joystick on this game was a terrible, horrible, abysmal idea. Very, very abysmal idea. So, quickly give you an idea as to what the game's like. Probably need to drop the volume on this because, oh holy hell, is it loud. There we go. Hopefully this isn't too loud. Now, if you've played Faxanadu, this is going to seem awfully familiar, only far shorter. Yeah, you get the exact same starting type thing. Right. Keep having to remember how the keys work in this game. So, this is a Metroidvania game. There is an actual plot. Um, apparently, the evil Jashin had turned the princess in the stone, and you are a brave duke. Believe it or not, you are actually royalty to start the game for once. You're a brave duke who is entering the caverns in order to be able to, well, find a cure for the Princess Felicia. See, there's Princess Felicia. She's stone. She wasn't kidnapped, at least, but, um, yeah, pretty stereotypical game. So, just doing a little quick bit to show you what the game is like. Um, very similar to a lot of other Metroidvania type of games. You can buy equipment. You have equipment that I can't even afford. I don't know why I bothered trying to get a weapon. Um, pick up some armor. Armor is actually one use, or shield, excuse me. There's a good chance that I may end up um, end up playing different music in the background of this game, just because, well, I can deal with the music of this pretty well, because I think it has a catchy beat, but I'm pretty sure most people would be incredibly, incredibly bothered by the music. And believe it or not, this is not the PC speaker version. The PC speaker version is far worse, way, way worse than you could possibly imagine. Trust me. You don't want to ever deal with the PC speaker version of the game. So there are various towns everywhere. This is the town that's on the surface, basically. And you go through this gigantic dungeon, and there's towns inside of the dungeon, and, well... It looks like this. See, that's in fact a town. Well, it pretty much just goes like this. I mean, there's not really much to the game other than what you're seeing. There are bosses. But, well, it's pretty much just this. Ah, there's slugs everywhere! Kill all the slugs! Um, there's also magic, but I'm nowhere near powerful enough to actually get any. So yeah, um, the main pluses of this game is the fact that it's a relatively simple game. I don't really need to think about what I'm doing here. It's definitely simple enough. The downside... 
I don't even think I knew about that. Anyway, um, the downside to the game is that it's, well, really simplistic. So, let me know what you think. Zelliard, the first of the games that I'm showing you. So, I thought I would add in a game that, well, I've never actually played before. Controller time. I may end up even playing this over on the couch. Don't know yet. Um, this game, if you couldn't tell from the desktop image above my head, about there, this is Kodelka. Kodelka is a JRPG that was released in 2000, so the very end of the PS1's lifespan. Uh, would not surprise me if it's one of the last JRPGs released in the US. Um, I have never actually played this, and this is also the predecessor to the Shadow Hearts series on the PS2. I really want to play this at some point, and I'm going to play this at some point, regardless of whether it's a Let's Play or not. Doesn't mean I necessarily want to play it now. I actually know very little about the game outside of it being a JRPG set in Victorian times, and I believe that above me there, I believe she's the main character of the game. It's kind of a survival horror JRPG, I think. Don't know. I honestly don't know what the game is like. Um, I don't know how fun the game is. I know it's got to be at least interesting. So it'd be interesting to do a Let's Play of a game that I've literally never played and know very little about. I have not walk read any walkthroughs, so if I play this, I'm going to be stumbling along blind. I'm not going to bother reading an FAQ. I'm not going to bother um, looking online for hints or things like that. I'm just going to play it. But for me, it was Monday. So yeah, Kudelka. Kudelka. It's over there, isn't it? Ah. It's, it's reversed for me, so Kudelka. Let me know what you think. Should I play Kudelka? Hmm? Eh? Huh? Mm -hmm. I I'm pretty much okay with any of these. Now me, I don't like your original choices. That's right, you forgot a couple of games that you kind of want to do a Let's Play of, and, well, this is one of them. This is Covert Action. Um, well, this is just the setup before Covert Action, I should say. This is Covert Action. So this is Sid Meier's Covert Action. Covert Action is a rather old, and by rather old I mean I think it's 1989 I want to say, um, rather old other genre of game. Yeah, other is a good way of describing it. So, the idea behind Covert Action is that you are a spy. I keep trying to use the mouse. I keep forgetting. There's no mouse. This predates mice, basically. This predates the Civ series, for that matter. Yeah. This, this is old. We'll go door two. Oops. Keep forgetting. Anyway, um, this is actually just the combat. Basically, Covert Action is a series of mini games, for lack of a better way of phrasing it. Alright, damn it. Anyway, it's a series of mini games where the idea is that you are the spy Max Remington. Max stands for either Max or Maxine. That's the reason why the cover that uh, about there, the cover that you see above my head has both a man and a woman on the cover. The idea being, idea being is that I'm going to die if I don't pause this. I don't know. I might not be seen. Nope, I'm apparently not seen. Anyway, um, the idea being is that you're called Max either way. That's your nickname. Now I'm going to die. I am the suck. 
I'm not really paying much attention. Anyway, um, the idea behind Covert Action is that you are Max Remington. You can choose your gender, but, um, well, it doesn't really change much in the game. And you are a secret agent trying to root out various terrorist threats or spy threats or local crime syndicates or what have you. You work for the CIA. Sometimes you're against the CIA, for that matter. It's actually, it's meant to be kind of like a um, Neuer thriller, t techno thriller type thing, except that, well, there's a reason why Sid Meier really doesn't like this game. Um, I think it's a fun game. I'm not necessarily the greatest in the world at it. This is a game that I have played a decent amount through about five years ago or so. It was the last time I played it. And, well, it's still kind of fun. Let's go ahead and exit out of here. I keep forgetting. This is from back when there used to not be these arrow keys here, so using these arrow keys means it thinks I'm holding down shift and using the keypad, so that works very well. Um, obviously, I've not actually beaten the game yet. So this is a game that I'd be playing through. It's a game that I am not the most knowledgeable about in the world. At the same time, though, I know at least something, so it'd be decently entertaining. What do you think? Should I play Covert Action? Hey, what about me? Yeah, 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 you heard me. What about me? Remember that game that you started with your Let's Play way back when? What about that one? Yeah, yeah, you see what I'm talking about now. You have a long-suffering game where you only did six episodes of it, me. Come on, you could do better than that. Give them what they really want. Give them some smack. Yeah, that's right. Now, the last time I did this, I had a save that I was going with, and I was instructing how to play smack more like the way I play, and I was using Yang, which, to be quite honest, I'm terrible with. Um, there is some problems with that. One, I lost the save. Um, the VM that was on it, I ended up corrupting the VM, nuking it, I was using it for recovery for other purposes. That didn't work out very well. But two, I didn't have a really good way of recording it. So the way I was recording it before, there were a bunch of problems. Um, let me just open this up really fast. See this area here that's kind of transparently grayed out, so to speak, um, that didn't work before. So what actually ended up happening was that when I was playing Smack, I actually had to disable Fog of War in order to make it show up, and that also caused me to start having major problems. I've since fixed that. Um, I've fixed a lot of things on this. Unfortunately, as a result, I actually can't stream this game. The other three games that I have shown you, I can actually live stream. I have enough bandwidth to be able to do it. I was recording all three at three megabits per second, which is enough where I can handle a little bit of turbulence on the internet, so to speak, and still be able to live stream it without too many issues. This, I actually have to record at four megabit. If I record it at three megabit, this text down here is completely unreadable. Also, this is the only game I have to record at 1080p. The reason why I have to record this at 1080p is because otherwise the text is, well, unreadable. It's really blurry because it's being shrank or stretched or things like that, and compression algorithms for compressed video aren't the greatest actually compressing text at that tiny. So, and I can't shrink the resolution of this. I can shrink it vertically. I mean, Smack does not natively run it. I believe that's... 1400, um, let's see, what resolution am I running at? Uh, 1400 by 1080, that is not in fact Smack's default resolution, and the default resolution is 1024 by 768. As a result, um, that's the reason why you see the interface kind of cutting off right about here. I do have the, yes, I do have the cursor on, just had to double check. Um, unfortunately, width isn't the problem in this case, even if I recorded it at 1024 by 768, YouTube would either chop off the top part in order to get it down to 720 pixels high, or give me a 1080p video either way. So I'm going to have to record this at 1080p. Um, this resolution seems to be relatively stable. I don't have too many crashes on it, which is good, because there are a lot of crashes for Smack. And, well, yeah. So... Let me know what you think. Should I continue my Smack game? And by continue, I mean start over from scratch and do this one instead. 
Um, the pluses are that this is, even though this is actually not the newest game, this is the only game I'd be running at a native-ish resolution. So we're talking very similar to what you would actually experience if you played the game. Uh, we're also talking about a game that I have completely and utterly mastered. Admittedly, it has been a few years since I've played outside of the little tutorial that I did before that ended up abruptly shut. But I am extremely good at this game. Now, if I'm distracted by, you know, talking with you or things like that, I'm not as good at the game. I will be the first to admit I am not perfect at Smack if I'm distracted by doing something else. If you want to see how fast I actually play, I've linked some of my test videos down below. You'll see it's only slightly slower than I normally play Smack, and you'll see how fast it is and understand that I can't really do that and actually talk at the same time. So, what do you think? Smack? Eh? 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 Whatever floats your boat.